Hey, what's poppin', man? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill. Um, another conversation series, another conversation with a, a dope creative, man, a dope person, a dope individual. Uh, my guy, Five on it. Yes, I said sir. it right? Yes, sir. What's yes, poppin', dog? I see, the, I see the Five chain poppin'. Oh, yeah, man. A little gift to myself at the college, man. Yeah, I see you, man. When, when you graduate? I grad. I didn't graduate college. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay. I got my associates though, but uh, I got kicked out. Of my you got kicked out. What happened? So it was like a. It was a hating ass art teacher. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the only credit I needed to get fucking out of school. Are you serious? And it was an art class. They said I plagiarized. I can't draw. So okay. I told like I told the dude. I'm like, listen, I can't draw. Don't know why I'm in here. It's my last credit, so I can get out of this. Room. Right. He like, well, this ain't a teaching class, basically. So I'm like, damn, like what? what? I came to you, man, to man on some right shit. to like, get some help. Say, I can't. I can't draw. Like, they said I plagiarized one of my artworks. Like it was a stick figure. Okay. Plagiarized. They kicked me out. Basically, failed the course. So for, in order for me to come back, I had to come back like on my own dime. And I was like, nah. That's what, would it be just taking that one course or? So it's taking that one course plus some other West Virginia classes. Like, okay. So that's crazy, bro. It's um, I love hearing those stories. Not hopefully you get back and graduate, but like I had, I got kicked out too. Mm-hmm. But I went back to school. But I, um, fortunately, I was able to like get a loan or something like that. So okay. I definitely. Understand, but uh, five on. Let's talk about it, man. Where you get the name from? How how, how you come up with five on it? So I moved to Florida from. I'm from Philly, so mm-hmm. I moved to Florida in like high school, and um, my name is Kalel. So it's hard for people to say Kalel. Like mm-hmm. it's just hard for people to say that shit. So we was at practice one day, and my coach was like stumbling over my name. He's like, cop, cop. He said five, <laughs> and everybody stuck with that shit. Like so, my homie started calling me five. And then I just came up with the five on it because five on is one of the dopest songs I ever. Okay, so how um. How long you been doing music, man? Like, when did you start? So when I was like, probably like 11, 12, my pops had built a little studio in that room, me and my brother's room, and we just just rap and shit like that. But he was like, you can't cuss. Like, you can rap, you can do this shit, but you can't cuss. Like, so we just rapping and you know what I'm saying? And then as I got older, I actually started recording songs. And like, so probably like two years ago, I recorded my first like actual song in the studio. Mm-hmm. And that shit like, motherfuckers fuck with that joke. Niggas fuck with it. Yeah. So question, you know, um, you playing football or whatever, you know, we see this a lot, like when like sports players try to make the transition to making music, but it's like the community or like the culture never really take it serious. Like, have you witnessed any of that when you like as your progression and you started making music and people knew you was playing ball and things like that? So I did at first mm-hmm. until like I started getting feedback and then I started doing like shows. People actually wanted me to come do shows with them. Mm-hmm. It's like open for people and stuff like that. So I did like four shows and like so everybody introduced me. This five one he played football. You know what I'm saying? You see. And everybody like, I was a football player trying to rap. And then mm-hmm. like, so when I did my shows, I would do instrumentals. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't do a song that I already did. I do instrumentals and freestyle. So the motherfuckers be hearing it, they're like, damn, this nigga can rap. Like, what the f- who is this nigga? So right. like the crowd would be going crazy and shit. So that's when I knew I'm like, all right, now I can get them to listen to my songs now. Cause now like people asking, who is this nigga? Like, mm-hmm. why the, who the fuck this nigga? Like, how he rapping like that? So let me see, let me see if he can actually rap on the beat. Right. They hear the beats, they're like, oh, this nigga actually good. Like. You know Yo, it's crazy because um, I was telling my friend, he's a singer, and I was like, bro, just sing something that they know first mm-hmm. so they can be just more susceptible to you, like so they can like you uh, just as a person and they give you a chance. It's funny that like you, you kind of figured that out young in your career when, like you said, you used to do these shows, you used to freestyle off the beat first to get mm-hmm. their attention almost. Like what made you do that? And, um, like, what, yeah, what made you go that direction? Because like just watching people do shows and stuff like that, people that don't know like who you are, mm-hmm. like people just going like, all right. There's so somebody that's right. opening or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like, all right, like you're not getting nobody attention. Right. You gotta get people attention. Like I went to, I only been to one concert in my life and that was the baby. Mm. And it, it shocked me because like, this nigga was just so entertaining. Like mm-hmm. he got people attention cause he was entertaining. Like right. he had skits on the, on the stage. Like his songs was like a minute thirty seconds. Like he ain't never played through his whole song. Every mm. song was like a minute or a minute thirty seconds. Dang. And he kept the crowd active. Like he kept he throwing water in the crowd. Like people love being there. That's like, a fact. You know what I'm saying so. Like I'm like, all right, what can I do to get somebody attention, and then let them hear who I am? You know what I'm saying? Right. So I thought about the freestyle. Yo, being from Philly, bro, there's a lot of heavy spitters in Philly. Like yeah. you got like it's so many. I can't even you got Cassidy, of course, Freeway. Uh, Beanie Siegel, uh, it's so many. Um, do you find yourself trying to live up to that? Meek Mill, of course, let me not forget it. Yeah, yeah. But like, do you find yourself trying to live up to that hype of being that hardcore rapper? Because I feel like I feel like Meek Mill got out of that. 
Like he yeah. was able to get in the commercial side and start having fun with his music. But like most of it, and I could be ignorant to this because I'm not from Philly. I haven't paid that much attention to it. But from the outside looking in, it looks like y'all just had a, a lot of hardcore spitters that niggas that was nice, but like not too many industry artists, right? Like how do you differentiate in like how, how are you in your career with like making rap that's like just hard and then making rap that the people can relate to? And we're not just the people that can relate to, but the people that can enjoy and like just having fun with your music, right. if that makes sense. Yeah, I understand. So like uh, if you listen to like the artists in Philly and stuff like that, you hear about the a- the average hood shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Sliding on niggas, running down on your ops, getting mm-hmm. money fucking bitches, <laughs> right? Right? That's, that's what you hear in any hood you go to. Right. But nobody actually talking about the other side. Like, I add, like a nigga from the hood going to college, mm. being broke in college, starving in college, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get some money, but go to school, your people at home dying and shit. Mm-hmm. Your mom fucked up, she barely can pay her bills, so she ain't sending you no bread. But then you living a life with people who like silver spoon. So they in that junk living life like, and you you coming to practice, you mad as shit. They don't know why your man just got killed the other day. Mm-hmm. I can't focus in class. How am I going to focus in class? My cousin just got killed. Facts. My cousin got shot four times and I just got out here to back to school, you know what I'm saying? So nobody hear that side of the, like the hood, you know what I'm saying? You either hear you getting money, you fucking bitches, or you sliding on your ops. You know what I'm saying? Right. What about the other side? But you know, a lot of people aren't hearing that side because a lot of people, as as many of us is it. When I say of us, like just African American black men that's going to college and graduating, as as many of us is it. Like it's not a lot of us in the rap game making music like that. We have a few. You know what I'm saying? We got J Cole talk about his college days. We got. A few, but it's not a lot. So how do you feel that your audience is taking it when they when they hear in college? I'm going to college, but I'm struggling and co- struggling in college. How do you think the audience is taking it? So every time I hear feedback from somebody I don't know, like that's when I know like I'm reaching, okay. like I'm reaching more people. Like if, even if it's just one person, you know what I'm saying? Like that, I, it was the other day I posted my shit on Snapchat. Dude was like, "Bro, I don't even know how I got you on Snapchat, mm. but your shit is fire." Like I, I was just listening to your shit and I was thinking about some shit I had that happened in my JUCO days. Like so it's like I'm reaching people. So right. like. The only way I think I could reach other people is if I actually like go in person, like and you know okay. deliver that message. You know that makes saying? sense. It's crazy, bro, because I feel like you know, street dudes, regular dudes, whatever you want to call it. I feel like they they do look at us different. When I say different, like us guys that went to college, they think it's like sweet almost. Like right. man, this nigga a college boy, he ain't doing shit, he ain't about nothing. But right. honestly, they be the dudes that that. Be more about it than you could think. Like, exactly. Tell me about your experience with that. All right. So I feel like college was like the both of best of best both of worlds. worlds. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Because like, if you really from the hood, you really from the streets. You feel me? You've seen a lot of shit. Like you've seen a lot of shit. And you go to college and you get to away. Get away. From that. Yeah, it you makes you want to get away. Like, so they make you become like you get to figure out who the hell you really is. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So is that person who actually go enjoy like the other side of life, and then mm-hmm. there's that person who is from like a you know, urban area, but wasn't really known. Nobody know you is. You're not really a tough guy, but you go to college now. You, you him. Yeah, it do be you him. him. It like, be you, them guys. You, you trying yeah. to chump people <laughs> that you know you ain't supposed to chump. Like you supposed to talk about, talk about stuff that you ain't even supposed to be talking about. Right. But you a tough guy now because you are far away from where you actually from. Right. Like, that's that's the two sides I see. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. Because that's definitely true. It be people that be punk faking and like, yeah. bro, you're not even like that. Like, <laughs> like bro, you not like. I that. feel like Come the on. dudes that are like that, they go to school and for 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 the most part, they they chill out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They they want to learn things. And speaking of learning things, how have like the college experience impacted like just you? You're making music ability because I feel like we're when we go to college we we open up to so many different people, so many different areas. We learn it ain't just about Philly no more. It ain't just about Baltimore anymore. You learn other areas. You learn so much more things. How's that opened up just your lane of making music and how you made music? Just not being ignorant to that is other areas. You know what I'm saying? Other things you can learn. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I've experienced other people um, like from Detroit, you got VA, Florida. Like so, I take all that intake and then I. Put what I learned from Philly mm-hmm. and like compare it. Like, so now I could put together a little piece of everything from where I've been and where I've seen and saying, like, that we all the same for real. For right. real. And it gives you like a, a broader reach, honestly, right? Exactly. It ain't just, I'm not just talking about Philly now. I can, I can, I can be relatable to anybody because exactly. I've met people from Florida. I've met people from, I don't know, New York. I've met people right. from Jersey and all over the place. So I can, I can relate to these people because I've had conversations with it. I definitely think it uh, definitely helps with making right. the music. Now let's talk about the music, man. Right. Two years. You did four shows. How many projects have you dropped since then? Like, what are you working on now? And, and what are your goals for the future and things like that? So I dropped around 
six six projects mm. in the last two years. Uh, so me and my cousin, he like my manager, you know, shout out to Dev. Um, he told me like, all right, let's switch it up. Nobody doing albums like this. So mm. we're gonna do four EPs mm. and we're gonna do it in your senior season. So we're gonna do first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Okay. So you know what I'm saying? Then when you name your songs, we're gonna name them football scenarios. Mm. So it's like, damn, like, and then every song plays into what that football scenario is, like first down, fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying? Fourth and inches, you know what I'm saying? Like, so my songs like kind of related to my football life, but with, I'm dealing with at home and shit. Right. So it was like, people love that shit. Like people love them, them tapes. Like, nah, it sounds good, bro. In like two years, you dropped four projects. Six projects. Six projects. Yeah. That's not bad, bro, because a lot of people be, be barely can drop one or two projects a year. Yeah. Like, how, how much time are you spending in the studio? So if I go to the studio, I get like a five or six hour session mm. and get like probably 10 songs done. How often are you doing that, though? Um, Probably once a month. Probably mm. once a month. Damn, that's fire, bro. Yeah. Well, how, how was your experience in the studio? Because a lot of people, it's funny, I talk about this a few times, bro. I see so many people like investing in their equipment, taking it home, and then building a studio at home. But I, I think having like going to outsource in the studio is so important because you have other people, you have other ears around you, other right. people that can teach you and help you, like producers and things like that. Right. How has it been? How has your experience been? So I was blessed that, you know, I got some folks that own studios. Mm. It's Groundhouse Studios in Philly, one of the biggest studios in Philly. Um, so he put me in that joint. Like at first, I was going in there. Like I'm a football player, so you know we watch film before you know. What I'm saying you actually go out there and do what you do. Right. So I'm like, all right, let me study the game first. So I went in there, sat in the studio session with a couple of dudes. I'm like, damn, I could. You know, what I'm saying they taking forever. They in there writing their raps and shit. But you paying by the hour, so you gotta have your shit ready. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, this is what I'm gonna do when I get in there. I'm gonna have the shit already ready. How I want to sound, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just going to record. So if I do need to correct something. I got enough time to do yeah, it. Yeah, you got some time so, to play with kind of, exactly. right? So I came in that joint. The first time I did a studio session, it was a five-hour studio session. I did like six songs in two hours, two, three hours. So I'm like, yo, like, you just did this shit. Like, he said, I ain't seen professional do it this fast. Like, mm. So I'm like, I've just been watching, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like the studio environment is like, it makes you feel more creative. It's like getting out of that house, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can always think in your house. So getting out the house and like getting in that studio vibe and you got the engineer and the music loud and you actually feel it. Like it's a different feeling than being in the crib and recording and stuff. Mm, that's a fact. Yeah. Bro, all right, so I wanted to ask you this question. Five on it, mm -hmm. that was your number in, in college, right? Right. Um, you said you had four, four EPs that you named like first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Right. And throughout all those EPs, you had songs on them that was like named after football scenarios. Right. You are uh, just related to like looking at the studio of like watching film and things like that. So a lot of this reverts back to football. Right. Question, do you miss football or how much do you miss it? Fuck, yeah, I miss, I miss it. I miss like the environment, like, you mean, the teammates, you know what I'm saying, the memories, the laughs, the, you know what I'm saying, like that that type of vibe. Mm -hmm. um, playing, I do miss it sometimes, but like, a lot of people don't know how sore you be actually at that game. Like, mm -hmm. you go to the training room, you got ice on your knees, your neck, your toe, like, it's all types of shit you go through with your body and stuff like that, but... I just miss you. I miss that environment. Do you think that, and this is just a question that I'm curious of, because I played ball as well. Do you think that your passion or the love that you have for football and how much you miss it could ever get in the way of your music career? Um, nah. I feel like everybody playing the game, not because they love it, just chase the dollar for real, for real. Mm. Like, when you growing up, what's the first thing your cousins and stuff tell you? Like, are you going to the league? Like, mm -hmm. you're going you to take care of the whole hood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's the first thing they say. They don't say, like, yo, you going to play ball to become a better man. Right. Who ever told you that? Nobody ever told you that. Probably right? my coach, maybe. <laughs> your coach, right? Your coach, somebody after who done yeah. seen the year after year, like everybody right. don't make it to the league, but right. your whole family, everybody from the hood, bro, he going to the league, bro. Don't yeah. talk to him like that. Like, you mm -hmm. feel me? But nobody actually tell you the real, like, you can go go to college and become a better man. Like, right. You can learn some stuff that you can teach us, you know what I'm saying, about financial wealth, you know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know what I'm saying, taxes and shit like that. Like, they don't teach you that. So that brings me to, like, one of my... My last question is like, why rap for you though? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your why behind it? I, I, you told me like how you started and things like that when you was young and you just rapping with your friends, I mean your family, and then they say you can't curse and things, but like why? Like why do you choose it now? Why do you choose to continue doing it? I don't know, I think it's just something in me. Like, mm. Every time I hear a beat, I could just like start rapping or you know what I'm saying, I start writing. It's just something I, I'm, I've been passionate about for a long time and I'm actually good at it, so people, Keep going. I, I want to keep going because mm. I want to leave something that my son can always hear my voice. You know what I'm saying? Legacy. Yeah, my grandfather, he was a singer. Um, and 
he was like, he was real good. But we have no like records or anything of him to just to hear that memory again. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. time to wait for nobody for real. So right. you never know when your day to come. That's a fact. But I just want something so everybody can hear who I was. You know what I'm saying? Bro, it's crazy because music never die, right? And we right. talking about legacy, and that's one thing. Like the videos that I do, the music that you make, um, anything that can be left behind, like history, right, and be found by somebody they can they can research it and they can have that legacy so when your child come into this world they can be like this is my father right, right. and that's definitely important and i think that's a great why and mm -hmm. i feel like you know um when we do things we do have to find our why's because that why is one of the most important because we don't have a why we're just doing it for no reason right. and i think just listening to you i think is dope man uh, what are some of the things that you're working on now that we can expect from you just moving forward so i dropped the tape just recently uh it's called dear cinco cinco is the name of my son um, when he was born, he's born, he's due April 3rd. Mm. So uh, I dropped the tape called Dear Cinco, and I'm expecting to do videos for each song. I want to do a video for each song. I got a couple features on there. Um, shout out to Young Primo, shout out to uh, Leah Bands. Leah Bands from Detroit, um, Young Primo from Philly. Um, they both doing big things. That was another thing I was lacking in my other tapes. I didn't have any features. Like I was always, I was just trying to get my name out there first. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in the game to where I'm trying to get features to get on other people's tapes and stuff like that. Um, shout out to Roller too. I did a feature with Roller. It's called Fly. This shit is dope. Like <laughs> he's a Florida rapper. Um, so now I'm trying to get into the feature game, featuring videos, more, more visuals. But how do you think? Um, how do you think your career gonna gonna turn, or what do you see your career going when your son comes, when your summer son arrives? I feel like it's gonna make me ground harder for real. Like mm -hmm. I already got a the mind state of like, go do more, do more, do more, do more, like. When I met you, you know what I'm saying? The first thing I seen, I walked past, I'm like, dang, you doing videos? Mm -hmm. We talked to them, the network, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Cause that's what the game is for us, networking. Like, getting to know somebody else. Um, and then getting put in that position to where you can, you know what I'm saying, excel. So I feel like I would just keep, you know. Bro, this is going. man to man, outside of music, man. You know, um, just growing through things, I've been learning so much, man. I have a daughter and um, granted, like she's my stepdaughter, but I call her my daughter. And one of the things I'm, um, one of the things I'm learning is like time is most important, right? Like I feel like as men, we always chasing a dollar so we can take care of our family. Mm -hmm. But we hear time and time again how much time is more important than all of it. How do you how do you think? How can I ask this question? Like, how do you see yourself separating the time between your work and your artistry and everything, and, and making sure you have that family time with your son and just your family? Like, how, how do you see that just going forward? I feel like bringing them with you, like mm. taking them along that journey, having them see different things. So. Have my fiance come with me, you know what I'm saying? My future wife to come with me. Right. And not just having them at home and, you know what I'm saying? If I can handle business on the road, you can handle business on the road. Like, we can both do it together, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's the one thing, just staying close to but it. But have you taken, taken, a, taken whatever, however you say, have you taken into consideration that, like, how, like, she might feel about that? Right, and that's why I ask, because right. like these yeah. are the conversations that I love having these conversations because, yeah, we can talk about the music, we talk about the career, mm -hmm. but these are the conversations that I strive to have because it's so dope because I feel like I can learn something from it, the people that's listening can learn from, something from it, because what we have in our mind and how we envision it isn't always how somebody else envisioned it. Right. And that's kind of selfish, not saying you're being selfish, right. but it's like, it's kind of selfish for us because I do the same thing, I just want to make that known, like it ain't mm -hmm. just you. But I wonder, like, have you ever thought about that? Like, damn, have you asked your fiance, like, yo, do you mind coming with me when, when our child, when our king arrives and um, just taking his role with me? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, we talked about it. We had conversations before. Um, she loved to travel. Mm. So that's a plus because like, okay. I love to travel. So right. we want to experience everything together. Like, if she don't feel like going somewhere, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't, like, pressure or something. Like, I had a show in Cincinnati in November. Mm -hmm. And we, she was supposed to go with me. She was like, I ain't feeling it. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna call you like all the time. Like, oh, I'm in that gym. Like, that's dope. So, um, yeah, she loved to travel too. So we talked about that stuff. Man. But that's, that's important, cool. bro. That's the things that we don't talk about as men. Like even you saying like, yeah, I'm gonna call you all the time. Right? Because right. we gotta, even if some, if, if our partner isn't like the most comfortable with it, we gotta do our best to make them comfortable. So like something small as, I'm gonna call you all the time. Right? Like right. that's important though, because it's, it's giving them that affirmation and that, and just, it's, Letting them understand that, like, yo, I'm still here with you, and I'm still here for you, right. and I got your back. But man, I, bro, I think it's, um, I think it's dope. Congratulations. Sure. Uh, can't wait to support you in more ways. Can't wait to your, your, your son come. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And I wish you many more success, man. Sure. And I appreciate you for coming. Tell everybody where to follow you at, anything like that. So on Instagram, you can follow me at number five I V E underscore on underscore it. Then on Twitter, number five I V E underscore on. Already, man. Another conversation series, Mr. J Hill, five on it. Uh. So, right, we out.